Hey guys, it's Chris with. Fuck. The fuck. I know. <laughs> I gotta give me a second because I I, I I had everything prepared. Now. Welcome know. back, everybody. Yeah. yeah. Ready, yeah. aim, that live. Energy. It's not ready, aim, live. It's self defense Saturdays. All right. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to GWB Tactical. I'm Tyler. And I'm Chris. And today we're going to bring you all one of our very first episodes of Self-Defense Saturdays. So what the plan is is with this is we're trying to create, we're going to be creating a new show branched off from the Ready, Aim, Live series that Jose and Wes normally do. Um, our plan is with this series, or this show rather, is to shed light on smaller self-defense cases. This kind of started with the whole Kyle Rittenhouse thing, how the media kind of shed it a really bad light and pictured it to be this evil thing when people defend themselves and their livelihoods and their lives when they feel that they're in imminent danger. So our plan is to shed light on some of the smaller self-defense stories that fly under the radar that the media won't cover, that we want to cover, to show that it is not a bad thing to use self-defense to defend your life. There's definitely like a lot of gray areas in some of these stories. And, um, you know, some things we might not agree with, you know, being gun guys, and some things we might agree with, you know. Sometimes, you know, deadly force isn't the first thing that needs to be used in a situation. And uh, I'll pick that out in some of these, you know, that we talk about for sure. Yeah, absolutely. We definitely want to go over these stories a little bit and kind of give our opinions on them. Did they do ne everything necessary to possibly stop, taking, stop from taking a life? Or was it deemed absolutely necessary but regardless most of these stories that we're going to bring to you guys are the correct ways of using self-defense because we want to show that it is still alive and well and we also want to show the correct ways of using it but also giving some helpful tips and advice if that hopefully never happens to you what you should and should not be doing all right guys so we got a story out of oklahoma here a yukon resident shot and killed her ex-boyfriend during a home invasion at approximately 4.06 a.m. on Sunday morning, the Yukon Police Department received a 911 call from a female resident regarding a shooting of her ex-boyfriend. The police said that the two had been broken up for about two weeks and there was no violence, no, you know, no occurrence of violence between the two of them before this. Um, the police believe this all stemmed from a heated phone call that caused the uh, suspect, we're not going to say their name or anything like that, to drive over to the woman's house. Um, after an investigation, officials uh, learned that the ex-boyfriend had broken into the home and confronted the female resident. According to the authorities, the attacker attacked the woman twice, and during the second attack, she shot him in the stomach. Um, she called 911, applied pressure to the wound. You know, she did what she could to, you know, after she stopped him, you know, to try to save him. And um, the shooting is still under investigation, and right now they still don't know if she's going to end up be facing any type of charges or anything like that. Yeah, so this is a great instance of why we like to advocate for females, especially to carry firearms, get training, and don't be afraid to exercise your Second Amendment right. Because instances like this where somebody who once was very close to you, who you never thought could hurt you, in an instant can flip a switch, and next thing you know, you're under attack. Yeah. And if you didn't have something to defend yourself with whether it be a firearm or not if you don't have something to defend yourself who knows how bad it can get just like in this case if she didn't have a firearm who knows if this story would even be heard or if she would even still be alive to this day definitely especially at 406 a.m um I, if you come to my house at 406 a.m i take it as a threat that's an untimely hour um and not only that in the middle of the night she's a woman she has a male attacker you know we don't know if she knew that it was her ex-boyfriend at the time or not obviously after that the second attack is when she he got shot yeah but at the same time did. too you know it's something like that that pistol made them equal at that moment you know he came in with an obvious um objective you know whatever it was she was at home her safe place and he um he messed with that so i don't know you know exactly what the what they're calling um an attack you know how far it got or you know but obviously it, it led to this man getting shot and um yeah. for all you guys out there who like to get in heated co conversations with your girlfriend and go over to their house or however y'all's relationship works out this is what happens you know sometimes you uh knock on the wrong door at the wrong time yeah and in this instance she also did what i like to see as the best things possible he may have attacked her once and she may have 
just kind of let it roll off, thought it was over with, and maybe thought he was going to leave. But obviously the second time she was fearing enough for her life where she felt the need to use a firearm to defend herself and her life. But in the same aspect, after that was said and done, and she realized the threat was over, she didn't continue hurting him or continue trying to do more harm to him. She actually attempted to apply pressure to the wound and keep him alive. You know, that's something it's a that's very really admirable good. thing, you know, and honestly, that could have been only because, you know, that they they had a relationship at one time. Um, and for I've heard of that happening to other people, you know, police giving aid to a person after they've been shot and stuff like that. Once the threat has been stopped and the person has become incapacitated and they're no longer a threat, then you can give your energy towards saving that person or making sure that they can live a little bit longer or and that's exactly why police do do what they do even after they shoot somebody just in, to either stop them from whatever they're doing or to stop them from hurting that police officer the first thing that they do when they say shots fired and they say that they have wounded the uh, victim or the suspect or whatever it may be they call for medical help and they try to save that person not necessarily because they want him alive to prosecute him just because there's no reason to take the life if the life can be saved. Exactly. So we also want you guys to give us your opinions down below in the comments section on what these, of what you guys think of these stories, what you think they did right and what you think they did wrong. So we want to thank you guys for tuning in for the very first episode of our Self-Defense Saturdays. We're going to do our best to try to get these out every Saturday right along with Ready, Aim, Live. Um, if you guys are interested in these stories and want to read some more for yourself, some older ones, possibly even see some of the newer ones that we're going to be doing before we do our videos, we'll link to the website down below in the description so you guys can see all of these stories and you can read up on them and see that it is still happening every day where people are properly using the, the right to self-defense and exercising their self Second Amendment rights. And guys, send us your stories too. If you have something popping off in your neck of the woods that y'all want us to go over, definitely love to hear about it so the website that we're using is called firearms owners against crime there like i said we will leave that link down in the description below but they also have all kinds of other things on their websites they have things like other events going on they have legislations law references voters guides and all kinds of local elections that are going on in your area that you can look up and research uh, guys please like comment share uh, subscribe let us know what we're doing right notice let us know what we're doing wrong uh, we have a link tree down here to give you all of our other platforms that we're on. But always remember, guys, who's, who's got, got your six? And um, shed a positive light on self-defense. What? No, I'm looking oh. at him. Sorry. I wasn't looking at you. I'm looking at all him. Right. Y'all were doing good. I don't want him to fuck you up with his phone. I know. I was fucking... <laughs> Well, hurry up now. Yeah. So what are you... <laughs> <laughs> He's still trying to sneak it out yeah. while everybody's watching him. <laughs>